Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian Report and I want to start with the S&P 500 because the S&P and the Nasdaq and so on are all very very close to their tops here as uh, wave 5 of 3 here so from this wave 4 here we're looking for 5 waves uh, up here but uh, in the meantime we're looking for 1 and 2 and 3 and ABC for 4 and then 5 so I figured that we would pretty much touch on the 2500 but uh, I may be uh, wrong in that and we may have a top in place already um, but what I want to talk about today even if we don't have a top in here already um, we're going to have one shortly and when we do have that top in there shortly that means that a move basically from the 2500 uh, coming back 38.2%, which is roughly around the 2300 here, is quite a large move. So how will that affect global markets? How will that affect uh, the Australian markets? Obviously, it's going to have some weight and some pull uh, on our markets, and this is what we need to uh, investigate. So I just want to go to the hourly chart and drill in here because the wave count that we've been working with uh, pretty much brings us into this area here of actually being complete. So that sharp move down the other day here, um, when I look at um, some of the drivers for this, uh, I mean, Amazon has got uh, five waves down. Um, Google or Alphabet has only got three waves down. But in this case here, we can count uh, five waves down here and it appears that we've got three waves up here. So basically down for one, um, an A and a B and a C wave back up here and then down from that point. So let's see if this actually, uh, you know, because that was a short sharp shot out of the, you know, out of the blue. Uh, let's see if it is a part of a turning point here. So we'll pretty much know in the next session once this finishes, it's a little rally here in five waves here uh, and then moves down. Uh, here, so we need to get this here to, to, to prove that it's actually going down. Otherwise, um, uh, I, I, as I may have explained last week, there's still a possibility that we've got a wave three here and a wave four here, and we can go up to, to one more space up here. But even if we went one more space up uh, here uh, to the 2500, we'd still be looking at a top, and that's what we really need to sort of get our heads around. Uh, for the uh, Australian uh, markets as such. So um, where we are with, uh, with Australia is, is, is here. Now, I just want to explain a few things here. The, the ASX 200 here um, is obviously pulled by mining um, and, and finance. They're the two things. So normally this is pulled around. Well, it ends up being sort of on an intraday basis, basically following the finance because it's weighted, the index is weighted in that way. Um, however, the resources, you know, are you know an elephant in the room and, uh, you know, they, they pull on it as well. But the main point here is that this top here, um, you know, on the ASX 200 has never been breached. But when we have a look at the monthly chart on CBA here, just to give you in the picture, this is a monthly chart for CBA here. Uh, that top there is that top here. So in this case here, uh, CBA has really you know moved much higher through here, very much like what the S and P five hundred has done and the DAX and so on. So, um, but the ASX uh, hasn't done that. And what it's actually done is it's created uh, in this move moving up here. It's created a situation where we have wave one, two, possibly three here, but wave four here overlaps uh, overlaps wave one here. Not that that's a big issue, um, and the other issue, but it's an issue. And the other issue that I've got is that the move up here to call this five waves here um, doesn't work because we've only got uh, three waves up here as an A and a B and a C wave here. Now I was calling this a possible one and two and wave three here and then having wave four move up but wave four that's moving down here is starting to overlap the top of wave A here which is wave one. So basically um, you know it's not looking good so we need to see basically our market sort of move up from this point here otherwise it will sort of overlap 
uh, here once again. Not that that's a big deal, but it's, it's sort of part of that sort of process. So, um, yeah, and the pattern that we're getting in here at the moment is also uh, corrective as well. So when we look on the the daily chart here for this particular pattern here. So if we were looking at this as wave one and two here and then wave three here, and you know, if this pattern is right here, then wave four is gonna be quite deeply, uh, you know, overlapping this particular structure here. So it's quite possible if I go back to the weekly chart, this is the bit that I wanted to sort of explain a little bit. Um, I'll just move this here. But in a nutshell here, this, uh, this it's quite possible for wave three to be here and wave four to be here. And then looking at this as um, uh, wave four over here. So we actually have five waves down here because the S&P 500 has to travel quite some way as well in its wave four. So it's quite possible that we're open to one and two and three and four and five in here. Quite a bearish move that's coming into play here. Uh, I. I can't prove this, but basically we have to go step by step uh, here with, with this. Now, with the, um, we'll come back to this, but with the banking stocks here, this is the XXJ here. So this is the, uh, the Australian banking sector here. Um, what it's done here, it really, it has, ta it's taken the top out here. Um, and it's got quite a nice structure in terms of one and two and three here but when we get to wave three here it appears that we've actually got five waves down here and this has always been a concern and all of this moving through here appears to be corrective as part of a corrective rally here which is pulling back to um, it's 61.8 percent mark here as well so all the moves up in the banks here uh, have done much the same thing as as well here but not only in this case here but if I dive in here further, this move here also appears that it's got five waves. And this move here that we've been waiting for moving up here to its 61.8% mark has met uh, its thing too. And on Friday, it's moved down uh, quite strongly through here. So this is the overall sort of, you know, banking sector here. And we were looking for it to move to, you know, close to this number here, the close to the you know, 61.8 percent mark. But this little area in here where all those open and closes are is pretty much where the most volume is turned over. So this is where it can likely fail from here and uh, and basically move down from here. So this this leg here can be repeated over here now. Now, I don't know if that's the case because in a lot of a lot of these moves down here, we don't have five waves yet. We just have three waves. But I have been talking about this for a while now, and we do have this strong move down here, which is on also some nice volume uh, coming into play uh, here as well on this move here. Uh, different banks have got different things going on uh, uh, with all of this as well. I find that um, it's probably... Uh, Westpac that has got the most damaging uh, move because if we have a look at Westpac for a moment here, let me just get this chart in here. Um, so from from Westpac's move down through here, and I always figured that the move down was was uh, well. Look, I'll just leave it at that. But the the main point here is that this rally back up here into 61.8 percent and then this strong move down here i mean it came down a long way didn't it it came down past that 61.8 percent mark and bounced off 30 and now it's moved back up into its 60 50 60 percent mark up here and this is the same for uh cba as well and uh and a and z and so on and um <coughs> this is a point where I can't confirm it yet, like I said, but um, the main point here is that this can move down here in five, move back, and have quite a strong move down through here. So this is what we really got to be prepared for. I could be totally wrong here, and we could just you know continue to move up from from here. But all I'm saying is that uh, with uh, with uh, this market, uh, with A and Z as well uh, here. Um, you know, it's moved. It, it's been a bit tricky because if we've got wave three here, we've got 
uh, if this isn't a this you know this move if this can't this can't be wave one wave two wave three here because wave four's really overlapped this structure here and also too this has got five waves down this is appears to be corrective this has got five waves down as well so everything is telling me that it's bearish um and that's you know pretty much what we need to uh, sort of be looking at right now so in this move up through here um, on an, on a daily and intraday basis I've been you know counting the actual structure moving up here uh, and it can be finished as a as an a and a B and a C correction right in here and I mentioned that right into the uh, right into the tick chart here as well um, also this is where we were looking for uh, for this, well, last time we looked at wave four here and then up for wave five um, and looking for a top here. Now, this also appears to be pretty much a five wave structure coming down through here as well. Now, I wasn't bothered about missing any of this because I really wanted to, you know, get the, you know, confirm things a little bit because basically what will happen uh, next is that um, it can drop a bit lower, but this leg here will come back and retest. Uh, you know, th this trend basically will come back and re re you know, retest it. And if it retests it in three waves, well, then uh, we know that we can start preparing to short here. So we will be, um, you know, changing uh, our posi equity positions in the financial section uh, to short trades uh, very shortly. Uh, so uh, I'm telling you the big picture because I know that you will, a lot of folk will have you know, money tied up in banks or the finance sector per se. And, you know, uh, there, there could be, a, uh, you know, there could be a change in the winds here. And, um, you know, we really need to uh, take that on board. With CBA being our leading bank as well, uh, we looked at it as wave three here, wave four. It's had a beautiful wave structure of one and two. And we can really look at this as wave three here and uh, wave four here. So it's quite possible that this can just go to here, have a little A, B and C here, and then move up for three, four and five here. And that's quite possible as well. Um, but what I was also thinking in this case, with the uh, same with the other banks as well, is that the move down through here is wave one, back for wave two, three, four and five here for wave four. So an A wave, a B wave and a C wave here and then we go up and that C wave coming down here will be um, in line with, um, uh, let's go to a daily chart, will be in line with what's going to be occurring in uh, occurring in the S&P 500 at 2,500 here. So in this case here, this, as you may know, the move up through here was, it, it, CBA led the move up through here while ANZ and WBC, they really sort of took their time to get up. They only started to run in the last sort of couple of, you know, weeks here. Um, but we weren't going to turn long on this market unless we had, well, we weren't going to turn long here unless we had 85 as a nice tested support. We weren't also going to be, uh, be the same with the ASX 200 at 5,800. Uh, we wouldn't be long unless we had that there as well. Um, so yeah, as far as I can see so far, we've got this nice volume down here on this last day here, that's is certainly taking out some stops and so on. So we've got this A, B and C here. So in this particular case with CBA, it's more likely that um, this is a corrective pattern uh, here and it can be counted a bit differently. Um, but yeah, look, what we've been uh, looking for is, is a, uh, is a move down. So just to let you know that it, we're at a tipping point here, a change in, in, in the, in the uh, trend here. Um, I just can't confirm it just yet, but um, what we will be looking at is the first five waves down, even if it drops down here further, um, you know, we'll be looking uh, for some sort of retracement and, and then it'll be moving down in this third wave really uh, quickly here. So let's just see how we go. Let's see how this, I mean, we expected a reaction from this area here as well, but um, uh, this is certainly on, this volume is certainly telling us that we're on the, the right track here. So I do want to go back to the ASX here for a moment now, because that's what this video is about. So 
If I go into the <coughs> four hour chart here, <coughs> we're basically looking for wave three here and looking for an A wave, a B wave and a C wave down for wave four here. Um, and that's fine. Um, this C wave does bother me a little bit because as an A and a B and a C here for wave four, because wave four is really overlapping um, you know, wave wave one of the same degree. So it is a concern. So it's quite possible that this wave three up here is actually uh, wave uh, B here. And we've actually got a bigger move down uh, coming into, into play here. Uh, I don't know if that's the case just yet, but I'm just going to stay with wave four. I'm just going to track these, these movements down uh, through here. Uh, so, um, with that in mind here, um, we can look at, I want to look at two things here. First of all, we'll go to the 15 minute chart here and just explore this a little bit. <coughs> so, let's just say that the, the triangle pattern that we've been working through uh, is, is completed and we're looking at the first wave down here because this becomes interesting because if this if we get one two three four and five here then we know that because we get five here that means we'll get an ABC and then we'll be going down from that point there so really uh, you know even if the market is down today then it's really this sort of rally this corrective rally that we've got to get through a bit later on uh, you know tomorrow and the next day so to speak uh, um, yeah, so uh, let's see today if we get this as a wave four here that's already pulled back 38.2%, but it may go a little bit higher. Um, but what we don't want to see it doing, it would be bullish if it sat on um, 5,730 because 30 is the top of group one. So it ha if it gets a tested support on that, then it's going to go higher from that point there. And uh, this brings me into the to the other uh, count as well, because I've got to be a little bit careful because this move up here is five waves. I've got it as wave C of E of B, which is part of the triangle, which is fine. But I just like to be doubly sort of sure on things because this is that other count here that we've discussed before where we actually have this up as wave one and A and a B and a C here. It's pulled back more than it's... Um, then it's 61.8% retracement level here, but I still got to kind of acknowledge it a bit. So uh, we can be wave one here, wave two here, and then go up for wave three here, four and five to finish finish off up here for this pattern. That's quite possible, okay? So I'm, I'm aware of that. But what I want to do today is I want to see if from here, we get this fifth wave down here. It might come down to the five, six, 50 here or whatever, but if we can get one, two, three, four, and five here, getting another low below here, that's going to tell us that we're in a bearish mode. It's, it's that simple. So, and if we do get this bearish mode here, we don't have to panic because we can get this. There'll be some sort of ABC pattern here that will pull back 50 or 60%. Maybe only 40% it will pull back, you know. Um, but then this is where we're going to short here, and then we'll be down from this point here. So even if you short it today and you want to just sort of end up down here, then you're going to have to look at the situation of, uh, let's just go into, now you know both counts, let's just go into the tick chart here. And I've got both counts here. So both counts, we would need to look at this here. If we took this low here, this that's the old low there and this, and this high here, then it's quite possible for um, this to pull back to, well, to this level here. I've got that upside down, but that's okay. Um, so what we, I can't draw here, but basically wave four here, which is already at 38.2%. So wave five coming down, I've just got it to group two here, but it might come down to this old low here. Um, and then if it comes to this old low here, well then that's the 50, 60% retracement level and it may not get that high it may just come back up into this space here and drop here but today will be important because if we get that move down here that will give us five waves of one two three four and five and then we'll know where we are if um, at the moment we do have five waves up here 
and that means we, and we also can count this as an A and a B and a C. So the reality is, is I've got this is the low, I've got five waves here, I've got an ABC correction here, and that can take us higher. I, you know, it's there, it's true, and um, I, I don't think it's a case, but I can't ignore it, you know. So let's just see today if we get this, um, this move in here. But by all means, you know, today, um, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, shorting, then you know, short any weakness uh, that comes in, in into play. I'll just have a look at um, just on. Just on 20 ticks, I'll just have a look in this little space here. Might have to go smaller. I mean, this little structure here basically, um, uh, in its own little way, is an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here. And uh, I think this actually, it, it does appear that we've got like one, two, three, four, five here. And then this is a bit of a third wave. So I think there's a four. I think we can go a little bit higher up here. I think we can go a tad a tad higher into this 530. So I think what we could do is that if for whatever reasons this spikes up here and then drops back, this number here, the 5720 here, after it's traded up here, or if it trades up here, and then this becomes the retested resistance, then glean a small position here. And then look to build, uh, you know, under the under the tens locked in and under the seven hundreds locked in, and and you'll get down into group two at least here, sixty five, seventy two, and eighty, uh, possibly down to the five six fifty area here. Um, I'm not quite sure, but um, uh, let's let's uh, let's see see how we go with this. All right, well, look, that's it. I just wanted to cover the bigger picture to show you this bearish scenario that can certainly occur. And it can occur because the wave count is there and also the S&P 500 uh, is there as well, which has been being held up by, you know, the Frank stocks, the NASDAQ, big NASDAQ stocks. But when you think about it, Amazon and Google, they're at $1,000. And if you know the trading levels, well, then you know that it's going to, at minimum, they're going to stick there um, and, and possibly correct from there once they've spent a little bit of time from there. And that's what's certainly going on, you know. So when we look at Google here, for instance, um, I was looking for wave five to move up for its wave three here. The mistake that I could make here is this could be wave one and wave two here and wave three and four and five. That's what sort of concerns me at the moment. Um, but when I look at um, Amazon, at the moment, it's the same thing away. It's given also given a nice little fifth wave here, but it's had the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and I was kind of calling it in around this sort of area here and the sharp drop here. But once again, I've got to be sort of mindful that is this wave one here and two here and three and four and five here, or is that it here and we come down for one, bounce back for two, and then we start coming down, do you know? So, uh, yeah. It, Today, today will be uh, a, a bit of a catalyst uh, for the S and P 500 uh, tonight, and 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 these markets as well, and also our markets as well. So, yeah, there we go. Alrighty, uh, cheers.